This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1388, Five Things Rich People Do With Their Money by Fritz Gilbert of the theretirementmanifesto.com. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is the show where I read to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet, sometimes a little too enthusiastically. But I can't help it. Money is an incredible resource that we can use to craft the life of our dreams. So thanks for joining me today and every day. Do you have a question you'd like answered here on the show? Go ahead and send it over to finance at oldpodcast.com and you just might hear from me soon. But for now, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. Five Things Rich People Do With Their Money by Fritz Gilbert of theretirementmanifesto.com. Do you think you can learn something from rich people? How much do you know about them? Have you studied their habits to see what you can learn? Do you think they inherited most of their wealth? They didn't. In fact, only 10% inherited their wealth. Did they start on their path towards financial responsibility earlier than most? They did, with the average wealthy person starting to save by the age of 14. What are the top five things rich people do with their money? Are there common themes which could benefit you if they were applied in your own life? Today, we'll review some interesting traits of wealthy people. Five things rich people do with their money. I read an interesting survey this week from US Trust, which covered 684 high net worth investors with at least 3 million in investable assets. There are some very interesting findings in the survey, which is my focus for today's article. There are indeed some very common traits among these folks. All of us could benefit from studying their habits and applying them to our own lives. Here then are the top five common traits regarding how rich people manage their money. Think about which ones you already do and attempt to apply a few that you don't. Number one, they start early. According to the US Trust study, A common trait among the wealthy is the fact that they had parents who instilled a strong sense of financial responsibility at an early age. The average wealthy person began saving at age 14, began working for money at age 15, started charitable giving, time or money, by the age of 23, and started investing in the stock market by age 25. I started working and saving when I was 10. In elementary school, I started shoveling driveways in the neighborhood and got my first real job, a paper route, at age 13. I saved diligently and had several thousand dollars in my savings account by the time I graduated from high school. Clearly, my parents instilled the work thrift ethic in me, and my wife and I have worked to instill that in our own daughter. Number two, they delay gratification. I had a discussion during lunch with a financial planning friend last weekend where we discuss the single most important attribute required for wealth creation. We both agreed that delaying gratification is likely one of the most important things within our control for creating wealth. Apparently, the wealthy feel the same way about delaying gratification, with 80% of them saying that investing in long-term goals is more important than funding current wants and needs. As I explained to my daughter when she expressed a desire for a motorcycle, If you want to build wealth, you need to save the money first and buy things you want in cash. It helps you delay your gratification and ensures your money works for you instead of the other way around. Number three, they focus their investments on buy and hold. In spite of significant wealth, 85% of high net worth investors say they made their biggest investment gains through long-term buy and hold strategies. Rather than being savvy day traders, They automate their savings month in and month out and gradually watch their net worth grow. They keep their investments simple with 89% using a traditional buy and hold approach in mostly stocks and bonds. In addition, the wealthy maintain cash reserves with 54% of them holding at least 10% of their portfolios in cash. They also invest in tangible assets with roughly half of high net worth investors owning real estate or farmland that produces income and appreciates over time. Compare this to the average person who borrows an average of $30,000 on a 68-month loan to buy a new car, which depreciates immediately. Smart? Not. Number four, they are charitable. Wealthy folks share a common trait of feeling a deep commitment to give back to society. 
74% donate their money, 61% volunteer their time, and 47% serve on boards. They find a way to contribute to others, which is counter to the stereotypes so often attributed to the wealthy. As I wrote in No One Has Ever Become Poor by Giving, generosity brings unexpected rewards to the giver. The wealthy have discovered that reality and most do not hoard their wealth. Number five, they manage their own destiny. Whether the wealthy gain their riches via private business or corporate roles, they all agree that owning a business is a path to greater wealth than working for someone else. I read a lot and there are dozens of articles that point to the reality that entrepreneurship is the surest way to real wealth. It can be a difficult path, however, as 70% of the wealthy who are business owners agree that it's more challenging than just having a job. Regardless, 80% still prefer to run their own business, demonstrating their motivation to take control of their destiny. The wealthy work hard and often make sacrifices. 71% say work responsibilities take priority over personal needs. Think about what you really want in life before you pursue wealth. There are trade-offs. Summary, wealthy people share some common themes in how they manage their money. I don't know whether it's cause or effect, but the principles outlined above have been proven time and time again to be fundamental building blocks for wealth creation. Yet again, this survey from the U.S. Trust proves these principles are critical and followed by a majority of people with significant wealth. You just listened to the post titled Five Things Rich People Do With Their Money by Fritz Gilbert of theretirementmanifesto.com. This post reminded me a little bit of the book, The Millionaire Next Door. I liked that book. It demonstrated that most millionaires are not living in the lap of luxury like we may imagine. They live below their means and they don't flaunt their wealth with material possessions. I think there's a distinct difference in being rich versus being wealthy, though most people use those words interchangeably. When I imagine a rich person, I think of someone with a high income that spends their money on stuff. When I imagine a wealthy person, I think of someone who uses whatever income they have to buy assets, not stuff. Assets are things like stocks, bonds, real estate, and businesses. Anything that can allow your money to make more money. Wealthy people recognize that money can be put to work and that's going to provide more security and peace of mind in the long run. I also like the point in this article about generosity. We are naturally communal. So once our personal needs are met, we are going to be in a much better position to help others. And that can be through actually donating our money or better yet, our time and energy. And that's another edition of Optimal Finance Daily in the books. Have a great rest of your weekend if you're listening in real time, and I'll be back tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.